Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and now it's time for another edition of Tales from the Underhive. This is our series of Necromunda Battle Reports. This is Battle Report number 28. This is a hit scenario that is fought between two of my friends, O Death of the People Eaters, which is our, you know, our campaign Scabies gang, versus my other friend, Fresh Prince Bel Air of the Iron Sights with his House Orlock gang. So we're going to have these two guys fight it out in the tombs. These guys are trying to basically what's happening is that the Scabies have been assigned to kill the leader of the Iron sites um but due to the scenario rolls we rolled it up the scabies will be paid d6 times five credits regardless if they're successful or not however if they're managed to kill the leader as well they also can get further rewards that can help out this gang uh the scabies didn't do so well the last time they played they lost several members of their gang when they fought against the adeptes at barty's enforcers which is our gang called precinct 13 and the iron sites have been slowly kind of like on the rise slowly gathering up more members of their gang so with that being said ladies and gentlemen we're going to show you some pictures of the both gangs we're going to show you their rosters as well we're going to put on some background music if you want to see what they're carrying go and pause and feel free to look at your leisure all right ladies and gentlemen let's get this on Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tombs. As you can see we're fighting on our underground subterranean lair once again. Both of my buddies wanted to fight out in the tombs in the different caverns, so that's the reason why we're deploying this way. Pretty much this is a hit scenario and the idea is that uh, the, uh, the defenders, which in this case are the Orlocks, their gang leader plus three members of his gang kind of like set themselves up in the middle of the play area. And what ends up happening is that he kind of deploys the rest of his gangs in groups of three. And he rolls a d6 to see what happens to these groups of gangs. On, on a very good roll, these members of the gangs will show up on the table to help him out. On Unfortunately for my buddy Fresh Prince Bel Air, he rolled a bunch of ones for all three of those guys. So because of that, they will not be showing up until later on in the game. And at the beginning of each of his turn, he has rolled a d6. On a six up, one of his groups will arrive until he rolls a d6, however. Nothing's really going to happen. At the same time, around the perimeter of the tombs, we have the rest of the uh, scabies. They're kind of deployed in three different areas. We've got two groups here in the bottom of the score, uh, screen, one on the top. Their objective is to take out the leader and put him out of action. If they do so, they'll get D6 times 5 credits, regardless of successful or not, but they also get additional income for killing the leader. They can loot a territory and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much how the game pretty much works out. So with that being said, let's go and talk about the individual deployment areas for this one. All right, let's go ahead and start with the Orlocks. As you can see, we have the leader. His name is uh, the Code Cutter. He's located right there in the middle of the table. Right next to him, of course, he's got a couple of members of his gang as well. He's got um, uh, Starbuck. That's the guy's arm with the hunting rifle. He's also got two bolt pistols. A very, very deadly individual. We also have the newly upgraded giant, the boy. He's packing a last gun as well as a bolt gun. And, of course, you have Kundalini. That guy's also packing a last gun. Uh, not a last gun. A plasma gun as well as a bolt gun. So he's extremely deadly as well. And they kind of deploy here in the center of the table. 
And unfortunately for my buddy Fresh Prince Bel Air, the rest of his gang is organized into three three man squads. And for those guys to deploy, he's got to roll a six on a d6 in order for them to show up on the table. Pretty much how you kind of wait with it, he kind of created like a three man fire team. Each fire team has a heavy. Uh, they got two flamers as well as a, stub, a stubber. He's got two Jews, uh, well, sorry, not two Jews, one Juve in each squad as well, as well as one ganger as well. So these are pretty, you know, comprehensive groups. Unfortunately, though, he's got to roll off to see if they show up later on. All right, so now we're on to the deployment for the Scavies. These guys on the bottom here, as you can see, we got Blood Razor as well as the Oculoid and Sokka Head. They're located there with two Plague Zombies. So that makes it the first five-man team. The second five-man team includes Nerf number one, Nerf number two, as well as Nerf number three. Nerf number one is exceptionally deadly, and they also have two Plague Zombies located with them. In the lower left-hand corner, we have two more Plague Zombies to be used as cannon fodder. And located in the upper left-hand corner, we have Bloodwing as well as Longcoat Killer, and uh, they're kind of, they're both mutants who are equipped with wing mutations. So because of that, we roll directly to top of turn number one for the movie phase. And that takes us to turn number one for the Orlocks. Unfortunately for my buddy uh, Odeth, uh, my other friend Fresh Prince Bel Air, he rolled very well for the initiative to see who would go first in this game. Uh, Orlocks go first into this one. Usually, it's usually the attacker that goes first, but because he did such a bad job rolling a first reinforcements, I guess that's basically how it happened. So as you can see here, he's kind of dispersed his forces from the center chamber already and starts organizing to take up defensive positions in the intersections in order to defend his gang leader. As you can see in the bottom here, we have Kundalini taking the left as well as Starbuck taking the right on the bottom half of the screen. At the top, John the Boy is located up to the northern part to kind of deal with any threats coming to the left hand side. And the Toe Cutter is just kind of stuck in the middle right now because the gang needs to be protected because if he dies, the uh, Orlocks will lose the scenario. So, not much shooting or close combat going on or recovery because nothing much is into the caverns yet. So, because of that, we go directly to the bottom turn number one for the Scabies. And as you can see in this photo, the scavies just come charging in as quick as they possibly can, maneuvering their zombies. As you can see, he's got uh, my buddy Odeth is kind of sending his plague zombies in first to act as cannon fodder and running up his scavies behind them in order to kind of take cover behind those zombies so that way the zombies get killed in his men deal. After all, if he wants to replenish his plague zombies, all he has to do is spend 10 credits. He gets d6 of them over every single battle phase. At the same time, in that chamber, look in the left hand column, the middle chamber there, we have Longcoat Killer as well as Blood Razor. They're kind of occupying the center chamber, just kind of holding position. They figure out where they want to go. Here's a close up of Longcoat Killer as well as Blood Razor getting ready to charge down this intersection towards John the Boy and hopefully take out um, the Toe Cutter. And looking like a scene from The Walking Dead, we got Plague Zombies taking point with the three nerfs, uh, the nerfs behind them, as well as Zombies in the left hand column as well, getting ready to head towards Kundalini. And at the same time, the south, you got uh, Blood Razor as well as Sokka Head in the Aqualoid with two Plague Zombies heading towards Starbuck. Uh, like I said before, most of these guys ran in order to get to this area, so because of that, there's no real shooting going on. Plus, no one's got line of sight anyway, so you really can't do much shooting anyhow. No one's engaged in close combat, there's no need for recovery, so because of that, we go to the top of turn number two for the Orlocks. All right, this photo is taken directly after the move phase for the Orlocks. As you can see, the gang kind of pretty much spreads out into the intersections and taking cover in the intersection area so that way they can start laying down some basic fires onto the scavies that are coming after them. At the same time, um, the toe cutter kind of vacates out of the center area, hits the center top chamber in the center row in order to uh, take cover and not get shot at because if he gets killed, they lose the scenario. Here's a close-up of Mud Guts. I apologize. I thought the ganger who was carrying the plasma gun as well as the bolt gun was um, Kundalini, but actually that guy's name is Mud Guts, so I apologize for that. So you can see here's a picture of Mud Guts getting ready to open up on those two plague zombies with his plasma gun. And here's a close-up of Starbuck <laughs> dealing with a whole huge wave of post-apocalyptic cannibal mutants coming his way. And here's a close-up of Giant the Boy as well as a Toe Cutter getting ready to take on Long Coat Killer as well as Bloodwing. So with that being said, we go directly to the shooting phase. And during the shooting phase, uh, Mudguts actually does a pretty good job. He opens up with his plasma gun, he decides to use the heavy setting, he gets 1d6, uh, sorry not 1d6, 1d3 worth of uh, fire for a uh, sustained fire dice. He gets off three shots, manages to put two of those zombies down, so they're down for the count right now. They're not exactly out of action yet, but they're just kind of sitting there bleeding. Now unfortunately for him, because he did that, he has to roll a d6 to see exactly what happens to his plasma gun. Uh, my buddy Fresh Prince Miller got really lucky, he rolled a 6, so because of that, that gun has to take a turn recharging, so he won't be able to use it this time for his next turn. However, he is carrying a bolt gun on his back so he can quickly switch to that if he needs to so pretty deadly on that part 
And at the same time, uh, Starbuck actually decides to not use his hunting rifle as a scope. He decides to use his gunfighter ability where he actually carries two uh, bolt gun. He, if I remember correctly, also has a rapid fire ability. So this guy gets out four shots with his bolt pistols. So he decides to cut loose onto the plague zombie, manages to put this plague zombie down and also take it out of action as well. He also manages to wound and put down um, Saga Head as well. So Saga Head is not out of action. He's just down for right now. But still, though, whatever hits they can get off, you know, that's the best for them. So because of that, that pretty much makes up the turn for the Orlocks. Uh, there's no close combat or recovery so because of that we go directly to the bottom of turn two for the scabies all right so here's the top uh, bottom turn number two after moon phase for the scabies as you can see in this photo pretty much what happens is that my buddy odeth decides to kind of bum rush his scabies and leave his plague zombies behind he leaves his plague zombies behind to deal with mud guts as well as starbuck he takes the nerfs runs them up to the left hand side of that central quarter to hit towards johnny the boy and the toe cutter on the right side hammer hand side blood razor as well as the aqua move up towards the toe cutter as well as Johnny the Boy. However, the, probably the biggest impact on the movement though was Longcoat Killer charging directly into Johnny the Boy, so now those two are engaged in close combat, and right behind him, Blood Rays, uh, Bloodwing is uh, going up behind for some support. Here's a close of the Plague Zombies getting closer towards Mud Guts. Unfortunately for my buddy Odeth, Plague Zombies can't declare charges. All they can do is move forward 2d6 inches. If they manage to impact into you, then that's automatically a charge, but you have no real control on that part. However, he is kind of putting that uh, Orlock uh, Ganger armed with the uh, Plasma Gun at bay because he's got to deal with two Plague Zombies, and then he's got to worry about the nerfs if he should survive the attack. At the same time, the last remaining Plague Zombie charges directly into uh, Starbucks. So he'll be engaged in that Plague Zombie in close combat. And as you can see, the Oculoid as well as Blood Razor kind of skirt past him and start heading towards uh, the Toe Cutter as well as Giant the Boy. And finally, here's a close-up of Longcoat Killer engaged with Giant the Boy. And that combat's going to be kind of interesting because Longcoat Killer is carrying a power sword, so things can go very, very badly for Giant the Boy. And then right behind him, you also got Bloodwing uh, kind of take up support to help out his, uh, his uh, mutant. During the shooting phase, uh, Mudguts opens up with his bolt gun, managed to kill one of the zombies in the process of doing so, so because that's one less zombie for him to worry about, so that thing is now down. And because the wheels can shoot, we go directly to the close combat phase. You can see in this photo, Mudguts had no problem putting all four wounds onto the uh, onto the plague zombies. That's 20 experience points, just dead himself on that one as well. Which is actually pretty bad news for uh, the scabies, because I forgot to take a photo of this, but he actually follows through two inches and turns around the corner to face the back of the Oculoid, which means that Mudguts can now unload on the back of those two scabies and take him out during a shooting phase, which is absolutely terrifying. And to make matters worse for the Scavies, unfortunately the fight between Johnny the Boy as well as Longcoat Killer end up being a draw. So because that nobody actually lands any blows on that part, it was a combination of good die rolling with sixes and also fumbles with ones. So because it ended up being a draw for those two, so now all they can do is just stare at each other and growl. And to make the situation more frustrating for my buddy Odeth, he can't charge in Bloodwing because Blood there's not enough room in the caverns for him to kind of gang up on Johnny the Boy. So now he just has to stick, that, stick it out and just see exactly what happens. And during the recovery phase, Saga Head is still down. Uh, he's not out of action yet, he's just laying there bleeding. So with that being said, we go directly to the top of turn number 3 for the Orlocks. Alright, as you can see in this photo, pretty much the only move that really takes place is with Mudguts. He decides to kind of go back 4 more inches back into the center chamber to take cover, drawing the zombies towards him so that we can take him out one at a time. At the same time, as you can see right there on the right hand side, uh, Starbuck moves up behind uh, the Oculoid as well as Blood Razor and gets ready to shoot those guys in the back. Here's a picture of uh, the close-up of Mudguts taking cover behind that center chamber now. Uh, because it's now his turn of one, turn of the pass ready, his plasma gun is ready to go, so I'm imagining that my friend um, uh, Freshman Bellow will be using that here in a little bit. And here's another picture of Starbuck getting ready to open up with his twin bolt pistols into the back of these two uh, scabies. And during the shooting phase, he has no top putting those two guys down. As you can see, he wounds and hits both, uh, hits and wounds both Blood Razor as well as the Oculoid. Unfortunately, he didn't roll very well when it came to the injuries that he used to put on these guys, so they're not dead, but they are down, which is actually kind of a worse situation because if Starbuck charges into them during his move phase and these guys are still down during close combat, uh, he'll just basically automatically put these guys out of action, then move up two inches again, take out the other guy, and it just could be just like a domino effect of death that kind of takes place at that part. So that pretty much makes it the shooting phase on this side. The rest of the shooting phase is a wash for my buddy Fresh Prince Bel Air. However, the post combat phase, in the end, the combat between Giant the Boy as well as Longcoat Killer ended up in the favor of the Orlocks. He managed to put two hits as well as two wounds onto Longcoat Killer, so that guy is automatically out of action. And then so Johnny just kind of stands victoriously. 
and he follows to another two inches and charges directly into uh, Bloodwing as well. So now that guy will be also engaged in close combat. And things right now are kind of falling apart for the uh, for the Scabies. And the crazy part is that every single time he's my buddy, Fresh Prince Belair has been trying to roll to get his reinforcements in. He's been rolling like twos and threes and 986s. So his five, his four man team is actually doing very very well for themselves, uh, considering how outnumbered they are. Because none of the other support guys have arrived yet because uh, they haven't rolled onto the table yet. So that being said, we go directly to the top bottom of turn number three for the Scabies. All right, pretty much there's no real movement taking place really besides the zombies as well as the nerfs. As you can see, the nerfs kind of, all three nerfs kind of take positions there around the corner of that cavern so that way they can take on Giant and the Boy if they manage to take out Bloodwing. At the same time, his one remaining zombie kind of stumbles forward to kind of deal with um, uh, Mudguts. At the same time, he just really tries to take all three of his gang members on the right-hand side, Blood Razor, uh, Oculoid, as well as, uh, uh, as Saga Head, and try to make them crawl two inches away. <laughs> As you can see, one of the zombies actually made a base contact with uh, Mudguts, so he'll be facing that guy in close combat. And here's a close-up of nerf number 1, 2, and 3, getting ready to put down some beating onto Giant the Boy and shoot him if they manage to kill Bloodwing. And finally, here's a picture of the uh, various scabies just low clawing trying to get away from uh, Starbuck. So with that being said, we go directly to the shooting phase. In the shooting phase, Starbuck actually shoots at these guys additionally and causes some more wounds on these guys since they're down. Unfortunately for him though, he wasn't able to inflict injuries and put these guys out of action, so not much really took place there. So because of that, we go directly to the combat phase, and in the combat phase, the fight between Mudguts as well as that Plague Zombie ended up being a draw as well, so they're just kind of like looking at each other at this point because nothing really much is happening. But at the top of the board, the worst possible thing ends up happening. Johnny the Boy managed to put a beating onto Bloodwing. He inflicts five wounds onto the gang leader of the people leaders, no problem whatsoever. Just kind of proving once again how deadly uh, the members of this team are that kind of went with their to bodyguard their leader at the same time. So you can see right there, Bloodwing is now down. Uh, he's out of action as well with five wounds inflicted on him. Which takes us directly to the end of the game because at this point my buddy Odeth decides to bottle out because he doesn't want to risk losing any more members of his gang. He gets paid D6 times 5 credits anyways, if he, regardless if he's successful or not, so he decides to bottle out. So that will do it for this one ladies and gentlemen. As you can see this battle report is now officially over. With that being said, we're going to go directly to the post game and talk about exactly what happened for each of the gangs. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the post game. This is the part of the battle report where we talk about exactly what kind of injuries, advancements, territories, and monies that each of the gangs make. So we're first start off with the people leaders. For injuries, Blood Right Wing, he actually earned horrible scars, so that guy will now cause fear whenever he charges anybody, so he just got deadlier. Blood Razor, however, got partially deafened, so because he has minus one to his initiative, the Oculoid made a full recovery, same thing with Long Coat Killer as well as Socket Head. Further advancements, the Oculoid got plus one to his attack, Socket Head got plus one to his ballistic skill, and Long Coat Killer got plus one to his toughness. For their territories, um, the gang actually earned 53 credits from foraging around with the, the wastelands, trying to look for whatever money they can, but they also got 10 credits from doing the hits, so they ended up with a profit of 31 credits in the end. In the merchant, they spent 10 more credits to so we'll hire plague zombies for the next battle. They also had 32 credits already saved up ahead of time in their stash, and they decided to hire a new scavy mutant. This guy is Nerf Herder number 2. He's got the bloody mutation, he's also armed with an auto pistol as well as a maul. The gang's new gang rank now is at 1,422 points, and the current record is at 2 wins as well as 4 losses. And now we'll talk about the victors of this battle report, the Iron Sights. For the injuries, none of the members of this gang actually suffered any injuries, so I don't really worry about that too much. For advancements, uh, the two guys basically advanced. That was Starbuck as well as Johnny. Starbuck got plus one to his initiative as well as plus one to his leadership as well. And Johnny the Boy got plus one initiative as well as plus two to his wounds. Now Johnny the Boy has three wounds on him, so he's very, very deadly now in close combat as well. In their territories, they earned 220 credits from working the territories, and they kept 55 credits in profits. They ended up buying frag grenades for Wes as well as Toadie, which are the two members of their uh, two Jews within their gang. Gang. Their new gang ring is at 2,718 points, and the current record is at 5 wins as well as 3 losses. So that'll pretty much do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, we alternate every Thursday between Tales from the Underhive, which is our Nickerwind Battle Reports, with Warhammer the Golden Age, which is our 8th edition fantasy battle reports for Warhammer. And we also have shows going on on Sunday as well. We alternate between Age of the Realms, which is our Warhammer Age of Sigmar battle reports, as well as the Ninth Saga, which is our Ninth Age battle reports as well. And then also, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new series every Wednesday that's called Warband Wednesdays, where we call here on our channel and that one is shadows over shade spire it is our series of campaigns for warhammer agent sigmar skirmish all right you guys as always please feel free to like comment subscribe your guys input is always appreciated and at the same time if you also want to check out our facebook also check us out on google plus as well as check us out here on instagram so that we can stay up to date with all the latest and greatest in terms of what we're doing for our hobbies that's gonna do it for this one you guys we'll see you guys on the next one you guys stay classy peace out